Hi there. We're here today at the Four Paws Animal Rescue Shelter in Sun Cities. Uh, this is a, primarily a cat shelter, and we're here at the annual Feline Divine Cat Art Show and Sale. This is a, an art, a group art show, uh, with paintings here in the enclosures where the cats are kept to benefit this animal shelter. Now, many of you have requested a video of me actually doing a live demonstration of my oil painting technique for you while I paint my cats. Well, today we're going to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change into some rattier clothes and uh, grow a little stubble. And we're going to go outside. I'm going to paint a cat for you. Welcome to the joy of or frustration of cat painting. And anybody who owns cats knows what I mean by frustration. Uh, today I'm going to paint a cat. So what I want to do is I've just got, uh, I've covered my canvas in a very light coat, slick coat of white paint, which will allow my paint to blend and do it right on the canvas, just like Bob Ross and Bill Alexander and anybody else who does wet on wet. We're doing wet on wet, but we're not doing landscapes, we're doing a catscape. And um, what I'm, what I'm just kind of coming up with the idea, well, what kind of cat do I want to paint? So uh, a, I'm, I'm just kind of going to sketch out very roughly. Uh, my idea for the cat I want to paint. I'm going to do, it's going to be kind of a, a pastel, a pastel -y kind of a cat. So it's just kind of like little girl's room colors. And, uh, and it doesn't even matter what kind of uh, thing that I use. What I want to do is I'm going to put in some background color first, just like they do. I'm going to, I'm going to grab me some, uh, some yellow and some pink here, and uh, ooh, that came out really strong. Got to be careful with that yellow, but it uh, gives me an idea. And you know, this is kind of a fun way to just kind of work really loose and spontaneous. Um, to get some color on the, on the canvas, and I'm just kind of going with a painterly, swirly kind of look. Kind of an impressionistic kind of thing. Put a little more white in there. Want that a little less strong than it actually is, but I don't want to mess up anything that's doing up to that point. And these colors that I use, these are the Bob Ross colors. They're very thick, full-bodied paints, almost like rubber when you mess with them. But uh, but they do give you good, vivid colors and lots of good coverage. The colors I have here is titanium white, cadmium yellow, um, some kind of pink, <laughs> some kind of red, some kind of purple, some kind of blue, some kind of uh, uh, phthalo blue, phthalo green, and black, midnight black. Um, so that's what I'm using, cadmium red, um, cad red for short, or cat red. So it's probably going to be the background red. I'm using odorless mineral spirits as my my vehicle. And this is actually putting in the background, especially if you're not quite sure exactly what you're going to do. It's really a fun way to do it because uh, it's kind of like writing the novel. Typing that first sentence is always the hardest part. Then once you get, you're good to go. And painting is the same way. So whenever I'm doing a painting, especially if I'm doing something like this where I'm working really spontaneous with no clear-cut idea, I, uh, I find that just this gets paint on the canvas. This gets the, the process started. And it reminds me of just the sheer joy of just the, the act of putting the paint on the canvas, of just watching it smear and blend around. It's purely abstract, purely fun. It's very childlike, like finger painting that way. So, and sometimes I might see an image happen in all the swirlies, and that might become the uh, the basis for the painting. Maybe we'll put some green on the bottom just to give it some kind of a variation. So yeah, and I'm laying in some some green on the bottom. This cat's probably going to be all kinds of different colors, kind of a just kind of a pastel mix-up, you know. And uh, 
I only, I'm only using black for certain specific details and maybe any, any shadowing, but what I'll probably try to do is try to play like the Impressionist and just, uh, you know, work with the colors and like Renoir did. And that way we'll have a nice, vivid, cutesy picture. I had somebody look at one of the Impressionistic ones I did where I tried to do it like a Renoir. And she described it, oh, wow, that's like little girl's room art. I'm gonna, you know, like, almost like it was an insult. I'm going, okay, well, now I know I can do a little girl's room art. <laughs> I run the whole gamut. That's for sure. <laughs> I'll paint any old damn thing, but the cats, it's my bread and butter art. So that's what people like to see. And, uh, oh, that's looking kind of nice. And dancing some of that green into this red. Just a mix it up a little more. The background isn't anything in particular, it's just a background. But I'm leaving something of a hole for my cats to be in. I can refine the background later on as I go. So I'm making kind of a neutral color there. Yeah, that's fine. Getting trying, trying to get done with the background as quickly as possible because I want to get to the fun part, which is the cat. And uh, so That's a nice neutral tone. That's a bunch of kind of green and orange and red kind of muddled up in there, kind of an olive color and mixed up into the white. And that makes a very nice neutral tone. Got to get rid of that white. You don't want to see no white on the canvas. If I want white in there, I'll put it back on. Now that's different from watercolor where you want to leave as much white on because that's where your whites come from. But here, this is an additive process. We just build up as we go. Let me put some uh, yellow here with this green and warm it up a little bit. And that'll be kind of a shadow area, maybe. Who knows? You just have some fun. Even if you're doing something really complex, like a landscape or even a portrait or a still life or something real, really realistic, it's still fun to start like this. This is the way I learned how to paint a lot of times when I first learned how to paint, is just to go general and then go in specific. You don't have to do the paint by numbers thing. I think that's what makes people afraid of painting a lot of the times. They think they have to do it. It has to look like a Rembrandt the second you start hitting the canvas. And I'm thinking, well, there's going to be a cat here, so it'll probably have a shadow. I'll use purple as my shadow color for now, just to get the general idea. I think that cat's going to be smaller than I was originally drawing it. That's okay, we got our ideas. The other fun thing about painting in oils is that it's a very forgiven medium. You can, uh, you can correct as you go. Now, I tend to paint Persian cats. For one thing, all that fur saves me all the trouble of painting too much detail on legs and things like that. And uh, I just happen to like them. So long-haired cats in general. So that, that would include Maine Coons. The Maine Coons I have to put in stripes. This will probably be a Himalayan cat today. I, I like to paint Himalayan cats. Graphically, they're, a, they're an easy cat to work into a composition because they have those points on the tail and their, and their face and their legs. So this will be a color point Persian. I think I want to go ahead and put in a little more of this yellow in the background. You know, and uh, fill in some of that. Because this kitty's going to be actually colors that these cats don't necessarily come in. There we go. Almost like watercolor at this point. Practically painting with turpentine here. Just getting a blend. And now we've got a, a perfect abstract painting for the Guggenheim. I'll sign it and take my million dollars right now. <laughs> One time I was at one gallery where I was exhibiting and mom had her kids there and the kid was really bratty. He sees this one abstract painting, you know, which probably took the person about an, a half an hour max to paint it. He goes, hey man, why doesn't dad do that and make a million dollars? Right on, kid. <laughs> Alrighty, now we get to the fun part, the cat.